So here's what I was thinking. For Super Pets 2, the opening scene, we need more kitty action. And so, you know how there's this Warner Brothers set, you know, the way it used to be. In some reality of one of the DC Earths, this was the way the sets were in the 60s or earlier 1900s. So, like, um, I was thinking that what we have is a tableau that takes place as this happens. Because, you know, it swoops out and it shows that it's just all contained within a reflection So of Warner Brothers. So, I was thinking, this is like a little movie premiere spot. So, all in the moment, as this happens in a few seconds, you have um, Super Cat fighting, you know, our orange cat fighting um, one of those set monkeys that are, like, small. They always have in different films. You know, so it's like one of those small ones that's more cat-sized. Then, um, like, you know, it's, um, it's like, got like eight, it's got like extra appendages that are all long, you know, can like, it's like reaching out like it's like a, like it's a spider monkey, you know what I'm saying? And it's like grabbing at the cat as it like zips around and dodges it and like zaps between areas like it's a Super Saiyan. And like, um... Then, like, the cat, like, all in that little space of time, you know, then, like, shoots ultra laser beam from the perspective of, like, over this way. While Lex Luthor, meanwhile, uh, was at a movie premiere here, and, like, he's got an invisible, um, <sighs> jet helicopter here. And so then he's, like, walking, and he's being sucked up as this jet takes off by this magna belt he has on his um belt loop or whatever so then he sucked in towards and whips past um this sign here as it pulls out as he sucked into the taking off you know helicopter jet that you know has the spinning blades as it goes up and then it locks out into jet mode and takes off so then, um, that's all happening as the cat, you know, is shooting laser beams at the monkey and, like, blasting it off this way. And then the cat, it kind of turns with the laser beam still on and it, like, slices this WB tower as it almost hits Lex Luthor as he's, like, coming out 3D at the screen. And then, like, the, um... <laughs> Warner Brothers Tower is all, like, smoldering, like, you know, leaking water, and, like, then it starts to fall over as, you know, it further pulls out. You see what I'm saying? And then you get a shot of all of it fading. My favorite part is where Lex Luthor uses that infamous fuck you pay me technology. <laughs> yeah, the, the best part is where... I get paid because I'm proving that I made this project because I'm making this all up while I'm looking at the Warner Bros. new intro. So you really should pay me at this point, like, before you even see this video. <laughs> oh, I forgot to mention, the whole scene, instead of it being sunset or whatever, or sunrise, I don't, I don't give a crap. Um, instead, it's like a moon night, and there's like a bunch of, like, you know, premiere lights going all over, you know, on buildings around, you know, by the theater here. And then, um, as it pulls back, you know, and goes into it just being the, this Warner Bros. symbol, then, you know, it's all still blue like the night, but then around the edges, there's like still like, like the concept of like flashing light and like color and, of like fighting the f fighting animals then check this out you know when it whips around and turns red for wag right then you know it just reveals the whole scene again at the warehouses where there's like orange fire you know all over and like the monkeys all like laying there all like its limbs twitching as you know the cat like you know swoops off you know as, like, the whole scene's lit with orange as, like, certain warehouse corners are on fire, you know, it's all dramatic, and there's, like, a fire truck, like, coming in all set quick. Yeah, that's right. Then, whoa. Anyways, then right out of the, you know... Right out of that uh, sky, you go into Super Dog or whatever, so that they're, it's seamless. You don't do the rest of this. You just go straight into the movie. 
I mean, you can do this. All of this needs to be modified. I'm just thinking as I watch, there needs to be, of course, pets next to them posing. Along with <laughs> their silly posings. Also, at some point in the film, the turtle needs to say, pet me, fucker. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> wow. Yeah. It's a lot of characters, you know? It's a lot of pets. We better get cracking. Confucius say, knowledge comes when you understand the meaning of advanced terminology, like a butterfly flaps its wings in China, and... What happens in Super Pets? The turtle's coming back from uh, the, uh, you know, getting sucked into the uh, super uh, attack of the uh, cat turning back time over there in Hong Kong. So then the turtle, uh, when it races back, of course, to the Americas, it stops right on the ocean shore and there's like this flower, you know, and it likes eating it in slow motion before taking off again. Well, there's this butterfly that's uh, just landed on the flower and it's like all like, you know, like glowing, like all filamenting around the outlines of the butterfly. So that like as it lands on the flower and opens up, it's like got a face sort of, you know, of like a spooky looking, you know, ghost thing. So then, you know, the... Turtle goes to eat it in slow motion, but the butterfly takes off in slow motion, so you think that they're both just going in slow motion, but then it continues to accelerate the landscape around them as, in one motion, the butterfly has flapped its wings. <laughs> it's gone out across the ocean as the turtle's racing after it in slow motion until they get, you know, they're getting all the way across the ocean past Hawaii, flashing past as the turtle still slowly, as if one-to-one -one with the hyperspeed movement of the butterfly that's changing continents, slowly eating it. So then as it races across the water and gets to the shore of the other continent, then like it eats, finishes eating it one-to-one. -one. And then as it closes its jaws, there's like a sonic boom as like, you know, a terrible like storm is sucked across the ocean. You know what I mean? And it's like you start to see like generated lightning and stuff, you know, flashing as like, you know, a whole new storm front is generated. Um, yeah. Also, because I like uh, everybody to get what's coming to them, the dolphins, you know, that were hanging around watching the battle, they care too much in Hong Kong or whatever. It causes um, the ones that stay and keep laughing to, you know, get shocked by the water. Versus the the other um, dolphins who like surf the wave created by the turtle going back across the um, between continents super fast, trying to eat the butterfly. So then like they're like surfing behind the turtle as like you know the wave catches up to the turtle as it's eating the butterfly on the other shore. Then like as the butterfly goes to like land on a different flower you know on the other shore like it's instantly flapping once and landing on another <laughs> flower then uh, let's see it causes the dolphins to then you know leap off of the giant wave that comes rocketing along like a wake you know pulled along like to either side like a V they're like in the wake channels like there are big waves coming along that slam into the like coast you know away from cities you know the turtle lands at so that like they can like hop off the sides of the wave you know and like do super flips in the air you know and like pick up a bunch of speed and like go into the water super deep looks all epic as they both as it's like a like you know like a jet presentation you know the, how they create a v and fly you know but it's like dolphins that are all like lit up with energy you know from all the super energy of traveling across the waves and generating like electricity into the um, wave of water so that it's like creating a storm, you know. Yeah, that's pretty cool. But they're like riding the electricity water so they're not getting shocked, you know. Part of the action. Instead of laughing at the action. Um, so... 
I need to conveniently have in Super Pets, like, a, um, reason why humans can start to talk to animals. So, um, Catwoman is that connection, right? She comes back to life. Hal Berry is, you know, Catwoman. So then she can speak to the animals and bridge the gap so that the movie can progress at a certain point. It's very convenient, you see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the way I imagined the Super Pets 2 scene with the cat fighting the bear is that, like, they fought in the early morning and they very quickly destroy, you know, the upper tower stuff almost immediately and fall down into the bay, you know, from where they're fighting up at the, the temple area. Because it's only, like, a small, like, overlook anyways, like, for the orange monk type behavior. So... The type of look is that it was so early morning that there's just the first peakings of dawn because the cat's so high up, that's the point, that it's, you know, barely, like, reached the horizon uh, of the tall, tall mountain. So when they're down in the bay, it's all dark, but there's still, like, light reflected off of, like, bright surfaces of, like, the, the marble, like, sort of, not marble, but uh, bright rock, basically. of the sides of the mountains yeah and like buildings and things into the bay so you yeah see like that whole f- light rays as there's like yeah dust in the air and stuff from the exploded you know you know raining down from the exploded mountaintop and like you know bits of flaming buildings from all the lightning and stuff and so there's like clouds over the sun at the same time as all of that so there's peaking light rays so you get more out of the lower like you know, bit rate of uh, color. Yeah, that nice, yeah. Because I know this is 8-bit color because that's what we said it was. It's yeah. 8-bit, it's 1080, you know, with 720 elements and some that are 480, but it's all solid colors and solid, you know, 3D objects. Yeah. And everything scrolls with the, the, the screen so that it's more efficient for people's eyes so they don't vomit at 24 because the environment's moving around like, yeah. to the situation. Uh-huh. It's all dot processed in an algorithm to say, okay, how much priority does it have and how much does it blur actually intelligently within the 24 frames mixed through so that your eyes get a pleasing effect and your brain is convinced because it's entertained that it's smooth. Because it's a video game environment. Yeah. I brought up when I'm going to be playing Super Pets that... I asked them to develop in their brains, basically, uh, the concept, because I played Star Fox a lot, different video games, and those that's how they look so good on every console, and I love Star Fox, you know, like arcade shooters. Yeah. And that's how arcade games look so good. Certain aspects are just, you know, not moving the way you think they are. The environment's just changing around a main ship. Yeah. So you always have a good sense of direction and speed. Yeah. I just have to point out the your concept of the super early dawn aspect where there's like that pink off a of platinum feeling because they already use platinum to render the cities it's so like you're saying that rock face white mountain area and the like reflection off of the glass of all the buildings like that pink feeling that's easy to animate and feel deep yeah. and simple you know at 8 bit or whatever because uh, th- that's why I'm saying it's like I actually am thinking about the encoding that we're working yeah. with since the first movie and uh, it works really well that all the purple explode up into the bay into the light so there's brighter purple yeah. contrast so you really feel the color difference because the shadows when you do lower bit are what makes that color more saturated so I recommend black light yeah. to have access to that type of energy and computing processing well, for yeah. shadows well I guess after the cat comes in and karate kicks with both legs and makes the fart happen from the bear and it shrinks it would be like propelled like Spider-Man off of the blimp you know in New York, like shot as it the the fart explodes, like up away, flipping, and then like in Dragon Ball Z, like comes to a rest and hovers there, like Mewtwo or something, you know, pr- assessing like what you're saying that scenario. Yeah, so like because the bear disappears, yeah, in an enormous cloud as it, as it explodes all the gas out of it, so it like falls into the middle of the water in the very center of the cloud, like shooting all the way down through it, you know. And the cat, you know, doesn't even give a shit, so it just takes off after observing the destruction for a little bit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, what I was saying here is, like, the point is, the the clouds are going across, 
and like the orange acid that you work with when you like you see it on water or something it has a rainbowing orange color effects that's what everybody uses they kind of split that sort of bright orange acid light effect uh, and yeah that's really important because that's what's going on out of the clouds on the light you know that's like as if it's constantly raining in the background and it's yeah. like supposedly like sort of rainbows that are glimmering and then there's shadows in between the clouds so it's all you can see them perfectly well we already explained light. this and it was already employed in a sort of way for the rushing super dog through the cityscape you know type yeah. feeling you know the light shafts and then the patches of almost like dense fog of like cloud, you know? Yeah. So I guess all I'm trying to point out is just that's how you control the scenario to have rich color. Yeah. Because with 8 bit, you're And then it also. People's eyes are. You got to remember, right? The more you generate coming at the audience up close, the better it is for 3D and the less rendering strain it is. Because you don't have to show things at a distance even less because you have like stuff happening, light shafts and butterflies and crap up close always happening, you know? Exactly. So then it feels like they don't need to focus on things farther away, you know? Yeah. Even though everything's rushing at their eyes constantly. It's it's a great. They feel lazy, but they're actually getting a mental workout, you know? Well, that's what I was saying. Everything, because it's a video game environment, is operating at a different frame rate. But because it's designed for the frame rate from the ground up, you know, yeah. the animation, then it can do whatever it goddamn well pleases. Yeah. I just said, stop limiting yourself, everyone, and then suddenly there's a better experience. Yeah. Man, I, I'd love to have... I'm just saying, uh, I've now convinced people with Super Pets that there can be infinite budget, because, like, Super Pets 2, I don't even know, man, hours and hours of experience, like, for 40x, like, this is like a test for, you know, Dragon Ball Z, ultimately, in the future, that I want to play in live action, of course, and, like, the seats, you know, the 40X seats, you know, we got to get those movements down, you know, how it would work for all the action sequences. Yeah, exactly. You got to have the cat going around the yeah. world, right? And it's funny because, you know, the, 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 it's like there's no seat movement on that. Then it switches to the cat's, you know, like, perspective as it rockets around the curvature. Yeah. Slightly different angles, you know what I mean? Yeah. As it goes round, 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 you know. Yeah. Anyway, so then... And you see it from a first-person perspective with tons of orange flames, like, coming off of, like, yeah. blue flames in the middle or whatever. So it's like, and it's like the seats move back. And <laughs> yeah, forth, right. It's like rocketing with its paws in front of itself, like... Yeah, so it's like hidden turbulence of, like, ionosphere garbage and stuff, yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah, it's got one continual, like, drawn-out yowl of desperation, you know. Exactly. It's great. Yeah. It's, you know, it's, it's one of its teeth that are both of them hanging out. Yeah. Like, you know. Yeah, all heroic, but anti-hero feeling, anti -hero. you know. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to explore that and more. like the shot, because you, you got to have it, you know what I mean, where it rockets because you have, like, different separated shots past some mm. old space debris, like, you know, the piece of some broken Russian satellite, you know, and it, like... You know that dog that died in space? It's like instead it's like frozen in space, you know, and the, the, the dog that the Russians sent to space to test their space astronaut shit that's fucked up. Well, it supposedly died in space. Well, the cat rockets past it and it like super heats the dogs, you know, it's all frozen in ice and it heats its eyeballs, that Russian dog. Yeah. You know. For, that they sent to space, I don't know. Oh, yeah, yeah. The space test dog that died in space because they're fuckers. Yeah. And then it, you know, rockets past it and it, like, you know, ignites part of the, the, the fuselage of it. And it, like, you know, the dog's eyeballs ignite at the same time as it, like, it blows up. So people are aware because its irises ignite that it's getting, like, flame. Yeah, that it's, sort of. yeah, that it's, like, exploding out of its sarcophagus, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like a snuffleupagus. <laughs> that is great. Yeah, I like that. Um... Yeah, all I was going to add was the cat, you know, it disengages from flying around the planet in a big kitty orange stripe. And it, like, sees itself, you know, trailing off up into the atmosphere as it's coming down to deliver the, the fatal fart blow on the bear. 
like it sees its earlier self that going up to start the sequence of circling around the globe like so it like as it's going down the earlier version of it's going up like a ghost image as it's like reverse time and sees itself you know starting the process of reversing time yes exactly yeah as though it just like you know kitty striped around the planet like the rings of saturn and like electrically you know dissolved backward in time you know what i'm saying to deliver the ultimate killing blow yep (laughs) All right, Grant sponsoring another character for Super Pets. It's King Crocs. King Crocs. Um, you know, we need a scene where he's wearing Crocs. Come on. But yes, be- King, King Croc wearing Crocs. But besides for that, he's like a baby pet crocodile that was like, you know, I guess in the sewer and like is stunted from green kryptonite and whatever radiation and stuff. So then like um, it's like... What I was thinking, and here's, I'm introducing this concept here. What if, um, you know how they make baby crocodiles make those, like, noises, like their guns, zappy guns? Yeah. Well, he, like, uses, he, like, charges up and, like, holds it, and it's, like, eyeballs light up, and, like, it charges up with, like, uh, energy in its eyes, and it discharges with that, like, zappy gun noise that baby crocs make, and then it, like, shoots lasers, you know? Yes, it goes... Yeah, right? Yeah, how they do that, you know? So, it, it's just a funny joke. I mean, that, that, that's awesome. I like it. That's a good character. Because I'm was i going to go through all the different villains and superheroes of DC and, you know, create pets for them. And so, yeah. Um, it's pretty fun, actually, pairing up that. It's good times. For the video game aspect of the opening of Super Pets, I'm saying that we need to have, for Super Pets 2, a super awesome video game because I'm just having endless action scenes. So even the opening scene where the cat's battling uh, the monkey on the the movie premiere set, um, you only get, you know, however few seconds of that, but in those in that flash i didn't mention the monkey with its extra hands i forgot to mention of course some of them are getting longer you know and like a cartoony like you know splat hands like trying to grab at the cat but then other ones are like grabbing flaming poo and like flinging it from itself and like so then the cats like dodge around so then in the video game version you know you have to dodge the poo balls that are flaming you know as it sets everything on fire you know, and the quicker you defeat the monkey, then, like, you know, the less damage it does to the movie set buildings. But anyways, in the actual movie, like, the, the, the sets that are on fire, it's like the monkeys, you know, flaming poo on the edges of the building to set things on fire, actually, you know. As, like, ironically, then the water tower, like, falls over and puts one of it out, you know, as, it, as you move past the scene. It's pretty great. I mean, Super Pets caught on so much that my grandma talked about me making it months before it ever came out in theaters and I was like you're referencing that so it's like taking off hugely through time and space somehow so like I was thinking I want to do a live action DC some point and I had my own character I made up Trash Man you know and now there's legitimate comics about Trash Man. It's actually supposedly Ragman. Yeah, I know. It's been modified to Ragman. I agree. Ragman's way better because it directly connects. Anyways, uh, I should promote that character in Super Pets, I was thinking. Um, because, you know, I used to have these rubber, they're called Kong Balls. You know, they're South American rubber tree rubber. So, you can throw them and, you know, I can throw, say, 120 miles an hour. Because they're slightly easier to throw than a baseball. So then, each time they hit a hard, flat surface, like in a city, they pick up more speed. As, like, the bounces get get shallower, it picks up massive speed. So you can get to, like, a thousand miles an hour, you know. So it'd be pretty hilarious in the cartoon to have my character as Ragman, you know, all mysterious, who's just doing certain things just to promote how cool the character is. But then, the super pets, like, I throw my Kong balls, and then, like, they try to catch them because it's entertaining as they're bouncing along, and they, like, get yanked by their teeth and, like, slammed into things and, like, destroy brickwork and, like, crush aluminum cars and stuff, you know. It'd be really amusing. I don't know. Like an upgrade to, like, Squeaky Bruce, you know. Yeah. Yeah. 
So the super pets learn from the turtle that they need to take a pause in between beating up everyone. So they like get a coffee break and then, um, well of course it makes the squirrel all jittery and his, his electricity shoots all over and it's, it's erratic, but uh, what was the other thing? I can't even remember now. <laughs> well, he's, he's a super pet. So he's immune to everything, including dying. So he's immune to the coffee, even though he's a dog. Oh, yeah. So then, yeah, he warns uh, the dog. Yeah, he's immune to the super hot, so it'll torture him. So he says, currently, he says, I, I wouldn't drink that currently. Or he says, I wouldn't drink that currently. It's okay. I got some tea for you. Oh, great. Uh, what's the flavor? Well, it's, it's really great. It's uh, lavender, but I wouldn't drink it currently. Currently, it's magma. <laughs> Until it cools off, then it'll become lavender tea. I don't know. Is that how I said it? I said it funnier. It was, okay, what it was is it was, um, don't drink that, that's lava. Yeah. And then he says, lava? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't look like it. And then... <laughs> And then he says... Uh, oh, because they got it from McDonald's, right? Yeah. Or Dunkin' Donuts. I don't really care. Yeah. Either way. And then he says, yeah, it's lava until it cools down. Th then it's whatever. Coffee, lavender yeah. tea, anything. Whatever, yeah. Exactly. Okay, we got it down, yeah. Yeah. So Grant loves his turtle transitions for Super Pets too. So uh, he's come up with another one where... um. They get finally a respite from, you know, fighting different animals gone crazy and villains and stuff. So they're all, you know, licking their wounds and trying to figure out what's going to happen next and, you know, talking and insulting each other. But meanwhile, um, she is immediately down, you know, in South America, you know, slowly chewing on cocaine leaves, you know, like silhouetted in the dawn, like on a mountaintop. And it's all, you know, super blue and misty. And there's like mist rising up through all the jungle trees, and it, you could like imagine it being like sort of cool and hot at the same time. Yeah. Like how South American jungles are, they release weird plant nitrates and also hot things at the same time. And then Wolverine's like foot slams down past her, he like sprints past, and you hear, yeah. and he, like, s like some guy like, like gunfire sounded, like, yeah. you know, like multiple gunshots, and then birds fly up from the trees, you know, all like yeah. it's silent again. And yeah. It's all misty, you know, the dawn is all orange in the distance, just barely peeking through the hyper blue everywhere else, you know, different shades of it. Yeah. Like the shadows. And it's just, and she's just like, wait, where the fuck am I? <laughs> yeah, I thought that was pretty funny. It's like she ran through time and space into a different universe cinematically into the exactly. future. Yeah, I don't know. As far as she can go, you know, that's how much she gets to you relax, you know. While they're all back in uh, Gotham, you know. So Christian Bale chose his actor name back in the day. It's Christian Bale. So he's got to be slapped into Super Pets as some sort of mad cow. Who's like spreading mad cow disease of like cultism. And he's like, he's named Christian Bale, you know. And he's like getting all the grazing animals like upstate, you know, like his animal farm. But completely different. To, like, believe that, like, a savior animal is going to show up, you know? And, um, I don't know. He's just, you know... And he's so strong because he's an actual lunatic cult leader that his charisma is that he hasn't been yet touched as if his cult is the untouched with the with orange kryptonite. Yeah. And he lifts you know, bales of hay, you know, big ones with his horns, screaming in pain with his eyes bulging out of his head as he screams with his stupid accent he has because he talks silly anyways so then it's like the joke is he's not even american yet he's starting a massive cult for no reason of animals that don't want to have superpowers okay yeah yeah there we go exactly 
And then the ironic part is, of course, <laughs> then enormous asteroid lands three inches away from them while he's ranting, and they all get superpowers. Yeah, that's funny. I like it. Yeah. So in the middle of ranting, then his neck, you know, his his uh, his bald neck is all <laughs> giant, you know, orange veins in it. Is it, you know, gets super huge down into his body, and he looks all ridiculous and even more comedically like inbred. You know how the super pet. Oh yeah, looks. that's perfect because he he somebody actually started an animal farm in upstate New York, but the pigs didn't take it over. So instead, it's run by Pastor Christian Bale. Yeah, yes. exactly. <laughs> it's perfect. Okay, so Christian Bale has another rule in a uh, role in Super Pets too. The the next role he has to play because those animals are completely irrelevant, and it's just making fun of. Uh, a certain type of Christianity. Yeah, where they he's Christian Bale and everybody gets free food, you know, as grazing animals, you know. It's like a commune. Yeah, anyways. So then he's also Paws Al Ghul, you know, like Paws, like Dog Paws. So he's Paws Al Ghul, you know. And uh, he's been using the Lazarus Pits, you know, for, for whatever, hundreds of thousands of years or whatever the fuck. And so, you know, he looks, you know, sort of normal, but he's all hollow around his doggy eyes. You know, when you do the close-ups, he's all... So are we saying that he, um, that his master, um, like, was already defeated by Batman or what? Like, what's going on with the human version of that? No, I'm considering two options here, and I wanted to walk a couple of them by. Yeah. I was thinking, one... He could comedically always just sneak into the wherever Ra's al Ghul has his uh, Lazarus pits and use them yeah. and sneak back out like as if there's just a whole tunnel, small yeah. one that he just comes in and out of. That's a good one. And he has his own separate canine community that's like a temple. I like that. With like different types of like wolves and other dogs that from around the world that are like, you know, part of his, yeah... And he's got, like, you know, some, like, you know, burning incense, you know, like, but, like, instead it's just, like, smoldering, like, brush, you know, that's, like, in the middle of a cave, you know. And it's got, like, you know, stone areas where they all sit around a big stone circle, you know, sit on their butts, you know, and discuss, you know, how their secret dog empire is taking over the world. Yes. The 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 one dog worlders or whatever the yes. fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Anyways, so you know, yeah, he's just leeching off of Raz Al Ghul. He, yeah. He's he's Paz Al Ghul. Definitely, and he's the biggest threat because he's been using so much Lazarus pits that like he's Lazarus three point Like he's gonna have to take some serious beating before Super. Or, I mean, not Super Dog. Um. Bat dog can, you know, finally defeat him. So that's like who can take the most pain is the joke, right? Yeah. And so, you know, Paws Al Ghul, man. He's he's got the paws. He yeah. is the ghoul. When Super Dog flies through the sun, he, he has different visions and one of them is just him reaching an epiphany, you know, that um there's this flashback scene where um Superman is uh, you know, dating Lois Lane and it's when she finds out he's Superman so um you know he they making a big nacho platter you know in his apartment and then like he goes and grabs you know some of the cheesy chip and eats it and then she goes to do the same and it burns her you know so then he goes to blow you know ice breath on her hand to make it feel better but then it comes out too strong and it, like, freezes her whole hand. And then she's like, oh, man, you're Superman, you know? Yeah. And that's the scene, you know? And then she says, what? And then she says, stop trying to make things better. Yeah, exactly. It's not working. Just stop. Yeah, as he's like, you mean you or the city? And she's like, I don't know, a little of both. She, no, she said, then she says, no, I mean my hand. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, our younger sister, Christiana, actually witnessed... Um, some people come back who, like, were you picking on our farm. So we, like, had a bunch of super cute kittens. And some of them were annoying. But most of them had thumbs. And some of them had extra thumbs, even by the pinky. Like, they could grab both ways. They're, like, actual thumbs, you know? So they were, they were our hand cats. And so two of them, they were called Milk Cow and Oreo. 
they were stolen by because they were tiny so you know they're, they're so innocent you know they think they just run up and somebody's gonna pet them and then they're snatched into the car and they scratch them up but they take off with them anyways so that needs to be expressed in our super pets movie as our orange cat you know it couldn't do anything as you know the kittens are stolen as it reaches out a paw no as it can't save them as it was a too far away, you know? Yeah, and they got dragged away from their countryside life to a, probably a horrible, shitty town life. Yeah, probably. It's not so fun, is it? Um, those cats uh, need to be returned because I, I've already imagined all the misery and woe they've caused. They can, you know, open anything. They have, they have hands. So they need to be returned to us because they're like raccoons on steroids. So yeah, and they need and to be out in the countryside. And they aren't gonna they're gonna outlive all these fuckers that live around here, let me tell you. And um, they will torture you. That's like a nightmare. They'll open doors, they'll leave things open, they'll make sure your refrigerator's yeah. open and the food spoils. So I guess there's that scene with the cat, you know, seeing that happen as it's like dreaming, you know. Yeah. And then it also, the dream shifts over to it being down here with it seeing us on the back porch here, you know. Yeah. And all that. Okay, so I was just thinking about it. And the final thing that we need for Super Super Pets 2 is we need Smash Mouth to, th to sing Three Doors Down down's kryptonite or at least some band pretending to be them if they're not available because he's fat and probably died of a fat attack because they're annoying anyways but just in that style you know what i mean so then uh we also need um we also need what was i gonna say um We need Three Doors Down the band to perform a new, you know, hit single for the 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 movie, and they need to, uh, you know, really put all their best thoughts into it, like their classic music video where he's here without you, baby, and he's trying to finish the song in the music video that he's singing in it. He needs to really throw those notes into a paper waste basket and keep on trying, you know, because we need something good for Super Pets too. And three doors down, he he needs to he needs to really come three doors down on this one to the lobby because he he needs to come down from his crystal fortress. I don't know. Anyways, let me tell you, there there's a good concept right there. But here's another idea, and this is even better. Then we have whatever original song or songs he's created for Super Pets. Then he does one of them at the end of the music video like we used to have, you know. So you can stay tuned after the credits to watch, you know, him sing whatever the fuck. See what I'm saying? Super kinky. You know, Avengers movies have really irritated me because what I've seen out of them, like how they're edited, they're just trash. And then, um... There might have been good scenes. I've even seen alternate takes that are more interesting. So because of that, I've got kind of a sour mood. So I was thinking for Super Pets, we could add in the scavengers. And they're like <clears throat> different animals that are like super surly who are like hang out on top of like a super tall skyscraper in whichever city, you know. And they like act like it's their like headquarters. So there's like different, you know ones of them you know there's like you know hawkeye he uh is of course a hawk and um he's got like you know mega swords that he like swings around in midair with and slices stuff into ribbons with like super prowess um you've got the incredible chulk which is a toad that swells up on gas enormously until it's got you know huge bulbous muscles but then if he gets, you know, it takes too much of a pounding, then he deflates in sections, you know, like a hot gas. Oh. <laughs> Let's see, you've got Black Widow. She's just an enormous, you know, Black Widow spider, you know, so that's that's pretty interesting. You know, she shoots, you know, web balls out of her pussy or whatever. Um, Let's see, what other characters are there? Um, There's that guy 
who just flies around the black guy with his wings. He's not called Hawkeye, whatever his name is. Maybe I'm getting things confused. Black Arrow, black guy, that's Hawkeye, I guess. I don't know. Why are their names so confusing? I, I don't even care. Um, as for Captain America, you know, the way he looks in his helmet, I was always thinking like one of those, like, you know, one of those super woodchuck type guys, you know, out here they aren't called that in the West, but, you know, he's got kind of a woodchuck type face, so I think that's what he is. You know, he's super durable, you know. He gets, you know, back slammed, you know, by, like, giant boots, like, kicking him. And he flies and, like, slams between skyscrapers and, like, smashes all over the place. And then he all, like, lands. He got a close-up of, like, his, you know, you know, big teeth with, like, a little bit of, like, you know, blood, you know. Wait, as he's, like, vaguely injured. Who's Tony Stark? Oh, yeah. Let's see here. Uh... I was thinking about that. Um, well, you know, he's Iron Man. So, let's see here. Um, is he like an Iron Beetle that, like, he climbs out of his exoskeleton? I don't know. That, that'd be interesting. He's got, like, yeah, tech upgrades. Yeah, he's obsessed with llama milk. Yeah, definitely. Boy, this is weird. Um, Yeah, so then they just hang out and act like assholes and, and, you know, scavenge everything. So they have, like, different stuff, you know, that they've set up. And they're, you know, living the high life with their, you know, crypto-enhanced senses. But then when evil comes a knocking on planet Earth's ionosphere, you know, will they rise to the challenge? I don't know. I find out in the Super Pets three and a half. So you gotta have a scene where, you know, there's, you know, some random mouse cowering down, you know, on the curb by the park. And she looks up and she says, no, those are the teeth of America. As she looks up and, um, you've got, um, you know, Captain Woodchuck. And he's, like, battling, you know, some adversary, and his teeth are all sticking out and gleaming, you know, in the shafted light of the battle. Um, I think it'd be a great scene. I think it would be poetic, poetic justice. So I was thinking, you know, you know how uh, Joker sounds all strangled? Well, in Super Pets, there needs to be a flashback of when Batman first confronted the Joker, and the Joker's all like, hey, what's up? And then, like, Batman's like, you! And, like, grabs him by the throat, and then he's all squeezed, and then you know, he sounds like, ow! Oh, you know? <laughs> Forevermore, you know? It's gonna be great. The cats and dog machine. The cats and dog, the, the fans love that. So, uh, there you go. I do believe that's a Super Pets 2, um... End credits thing. name? End credits, you know? Yeah. Sounds pretty good to me. Yeah. I Make like Winter Gatton do something other than scamming on his marble machine for three billion years. Yeah. Make him make, like, five more songs. Yeah, if he can come up with more stuff that's enjoyable, you know? I'll use it. Also, have him suck my dick. See, nobody knew Life of Pets was the prequel to DC's Life of Super Pets, and that that annoying character, Corgi, in the first one, would become the villain in the sequel to Life of Pets. And so, um, I'm just thinking that he's just a minor villain that they beat the crap out of as he's got, you know, big blue syndrome, you know, like it's kind of making fun of, um, like he thinks he's all wise and knowing because he was already acting like that. Um, like, um, Dr. Manhattan, right? And then they just beat the crap out of him and whatever, and he shrinks back down. But then, 
they actually have to fight the underminer, you see, because what happens is when Super <laughs> when Super Dog is having his uh Cryer's ice cream binge and watching the great British bake off, he's so upset that he turns the volume up, you know, so high that it's the final straw. Everybody in the city is watching the British bake off at the same time. And the underminers, this gopher that the gets a hold of some of the um, you know, orange crystal kryptonite. And then it um, swears revenge because it couldn't escape from hearing about terrible British baking, you know? And so then it's going to weaken because it's heard everyone talking in all the cities down through the pipes into the sewers, down into the soil. All the echoing because it has super ears. And uh, it's going to mess with everyone mentally and, like, undermine their their sanity. Like, the first movie already had, like, evil... You know, <laughs> guinea pigs. We're going to go farther with this. Because they never even delivered in that other series with the Underminer Incredibles. So I'm going to have it be an actual gopher. You know, we're going to go hard in the paint. He's going to, like, make them question weird stuff. Like, because he, like, you know, their um, DC setup there, Super Headquarters, is right there conveniently... Instead of a tall building, it's kind of like an extended out campus there by the water. And he's, uh, he's going to threaten their, the very foundations of their core beliefs, physically, spiritually. And uh, um, I don't know. We'll fill and figure out more plot later. Sexual. Probably. <laughs> yeah, sexual tension. So Owen Wilson is a techno hamster wizard of the... You know, go, going along wires and buildings, you know, in the pipes because he's small. And, and uh, like, modifying things and, like, hacking into and changing, like, what's shown on security cameras and messing with everyone's heads. Because he's working for the underminer. So then he's all, like, you got silly, like, crooked, you know, front teeth that are sexy. And, like, a strip of yellow hair up his back and, like, a fluff on his head. So then, um, you know, the evil uh, guinea pig... Uh, is all like, oh man, like she keeps getting distracted because she's so turned on by him, you know. And so then he's always like talking nerdy, you know, and like rationing out like how they're going to like have their evil plan and she keeps, you know, her eyes keep, you know, getting all sparkly and stuff. So then, of course, you know, true love, you know, it uh, alters her uh, animal instincts. It's good stuff. All right, Super Pets picks up right where the other movie stopped, where there's the giant dog who's turned blue, all super blue from the orange kryptonite, like reverse energy because he's evil. So then, like, he swallowed the entire mail truck, and he's all like, I will rule the mail system forever. And then, um, you know, uh, Indestructo Dog gets... Uh, thrown at his backside really hard and he uh, smashes into it and he barfs out, the big blue dog barfs out the whole mail truck and gets all the energy blasted out of his like nose and you know face all boom all blasted and then like there's like when all the sparkly blue dust is gone there's just like an imprint of where the blue dog was like on the wall you know of the building nearby <laughs> Just, like, blasted all the energy right out of him because he, like, was nothing but energy. He turned into big blue particles and got blasted into the building. So there's, like, a permanent, like, blue, like, paint splotch. There's the dog there. And they're all like, huh. So the whole movie of Secret Super Pets 2, uh, nobody thinks about it because they're busy watching it. But Lex Luthor's not really in the movie. Then at the end, is like, uh, revealed that he's been, uh, the orange cat's been contracted to kill him so he's just been escaping from the orange cat all over the world and finally he's like on a moon base and like he's got like these kryptonite lasers that all like shock the cat as it like comes in you know floating down you know onto the moon base he's at and it all shocks the cat at once you know and it all uh shoots and then it shoots laser beams out of its eyes that are all orange and then like um there's like a huge explosion and like you know you just see it at a distance as the movie ends you know just the moon dust you know exploding 
and you don't know what happens. So the big blue dog, you know, he then becomes the bricks of the alleyway, you know, like, you know, dog shaped as he all like sounds weird and bricky and moves around like he's like a golem dog, you know, as he's been like, it's, you know, Hulk 2001 movie. <laughs> Like he's been turned into the bricks permanently, so that's like his punishment for trying to eat the mail. So then uh, there's all these other pets around the city that are getting superpowers and acting bad. So then it's the job of the super pets to uh, rush around and uh, tell them to get to control themselves. And uh, I don't know, you can we can like go through all different silly animals. Like you know, we could hit the zoo. You know, we could have like elephants. Um, like shooting like super water torrents that are like blasting everything. Uh, you know, what do you think? What other animals should we get in on this? Um, I think you should have uh peacocks that like whip out their their feathers and create like a blinding sunlight effect, like, oh that's beautiful. And then it's like, oh wait, ah oh! it's like searing, like <laughs> yeah. blinding laser light of like the, the peacock yeah. feathers, like but just like super heat to where they have to run away as it sears them, you know, like yeah. it's, because all it's doing is bouncing the sun hyper efficiently. It's not actually shooting anything. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Um, you could have some beavers that are gnawing through everything, including like steel and like, <laughs> yeah. turning it into Yeah, turning it into big dams, you know, yeah. <laughs> like by the river, like creating yeah. a new dam over the river with like skyscrapers. <laughs> yeah, and you have angry hippos kicking the shit out of boats, you know. Yeah, yeah. Flipping them up and like making them land on buildings. And then you have giraffes that are just kicking each other in the testicles instead of harassing the humans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're just minding their own business. <laughs> just kicking each other in the balls. Yeah, making their eyeballs bug out each time. Yes. <laughs> well, I don't know why. Oh, yes, and then and then gorillas uh, are, are randomly, like, you know, kidnapping random people, acting like they're their babies all over the city. Yeah, you know, like, yeah. They're like, horrified and terrified. That's true. That would be pretty scary, <laughs> you know. Then there's, like, gorillas making them, like, banana smoothies in their apartments, you know. Yes. <laughs> it's, like, forcing them to clean their rooms. <laughs> I like uh, this. The orangutans get free, but they, they just do nothing. They just they just sit around and then drive cars slowly down the street. <laughs> yeah, too things. slowly and make yes. traffic go slower. Yes. <laughs> Man, animals on the loose. So naturally, Batman um, upgrades his bat's cave with um, orange kryptonites and all the bats are supercharged. And they're going around, flying around the city like I wanted in a Batman movie. So I'm doing it in Super Pets. Where all the bats shoot out their signals and it creates like a ne network that he can track the, you know, see everything across the city. So he, you know, finds out, he sees movement that they're going to be, you know, having a uh, meeting at the fish factory, you know, where, you know, the penguins uh, been known to do stuff at. So um, they show up there because the penguin's going to meet some guy named Mercedes Cadillac, supposedly. So, um, all you see of Mercedes Cadillac is just, like, he's got, like, on, like, a trench coat and, like, one of those big hats, you know, and he's got, like, you can, like, see some, like, tattoos on his, like, hands, ends, and, um, he looks kind of ball big and bulky, like he's, like, some super villain or something. So then, um, Batman and, um, and Max, they uh, disconnect from their, you know, high altitude bat wing glider and come flying in, activating their bat suit bat wings. And Max is in front, you know, and he's got a leash connection to Batman who's holding his leash, you know. And he's got his own set of bat wings and his dog suit, bat suit. And they come flying in and smash through the uh, skylight, you know, into the warehouse. And Max, you know, his uh, connection to Batman leash disconnects. And sucks into his collar and then shoots over to a pillar as he rockets around like a bat dog 360 and smashes into the um, uh, orange super cat who's been, you know, trying to uh, take over the um, fish business from the penguin, you know. Yeah. Been enslaving all the people there because, you know, it's just a monster, you know. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with that cat. What are we doing? So, anyways. Um, then meanwhile, Batman, you know, is in the background beating up endless, you know, henchmen boringly. 
while wow. Super Dog whips his leash against posts and stuff in the warehouse and flies around kicking the shit out of him and stuff. Yeah. Or Max, whatever. But the point is, right, um, we finally get to the point where, um, you know, Max has been, you know, like, grabbing beams and, like, smashing them into the cat, and the cat's been, like, you know, melting through the beam with, like, super, you know, like, super orange, like, cauterizing, like, fish breath, you know, and so then they're battling for a while as, you know, they run around in the beams of the warehouse, like, you know, flashing around, beating the shit out of each other, and then, um, you know, finally the villain arrives, you know, late, um, Mercedes Cadillac, and he reveals himself as, uh, actually just Bane, but you see, now he's Mercedes Cadillac, he's in disguise, because he has an octopus pet that's gotten affected by orange kryptonite, so you know, it, like, it's on his back, so it's like Dr. Octagonopus, <laughs> and, like, his tentacles can, like, whip out and, like, shock smack people, and then it, like, puts them on its on his arms, you know, down, and he's like, it's my new juice, you know? And, like, the octopus shocks his arms, and he's got, like, big, like, leg-sized arms, and he's, like, punching Batman and beating him up. Yeah. So, so then, uh, I guess Max, you know, finally beats up the orange cat, and, you know, there's a huge explosion as he, you know, bites a propane canister as the cat you know is right next to him he like whips it in front of the cat as it shoots more laser vision at him and the cat gets blown out the side windows out across the uh you know waterfront and, you know bow like skipping across the lot like meow, meow, like skipping along oh, you out mean, you mean like yeah and then he goes Whoa! across the water and he like hits into like a fishing vessel yeah or exactly <laughs> and then like the cat's like, you know, laying in a pile of like fish, you know, yeah. fish heads and stuff in the in the fishing vessel. So then he's incapacitated or she's incapacitated or whatever. Yeah. Oh man, this camera's going nuts. <sighs> How do oh, let me let me reset this. There we go. Oh yeah. Alright, so um then of course, um Batman and Max are fighting Bane, who is like, you know, keeps shocking him horrifically, but then Batman's like, good thing I installed these, you know, <laughs> rubber bat nipples that discharge, you know, all the electricity <laughs> on my bat suit. And they're like, his bat nipples are like sending out lightning bolts and like yeah. shocking into the warehouse, like into the beams and stuff, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As finally, you know, Bane, he uh, super punches too hard and the entire warehouse sinks into the water, you know. Yeah, it collapses. Yeah, and everybody's lost in the chaos, you know, and that's the end of the scene, I guess. Exactly. <laughs> just too epic, just too much action. You know that electricity ship they're flying around in the Matrix? What I was thinking is, you know how dogs have, you know, nipples down their stomach or whatever. So, like, Max, his doggy suit, you know, when he gets super shocked by the, you know, Bane super punch, then, like, it's all, like, discharging through him as he's, like, running, you know. <laughs> so then it's, like, he looks like the ship on the underside, like, off the nipples, like, nyeh, like, zapping off in all other directions as he's, like, like, maneuvering around, you know, as you like, have a silly camera angle, like, he's, like, you know, angling around off of the electricity of his nipples a little bit on the surface, you know what I mean? Because he's so indestructible. I don't know. So, uh, Doomsday has already showed up in the plot of Super Pets because everything's already happened. It's an ongoing villain, superhero, scenario battle across, you know, the DC multiverse. So then Super Pets, we're adding it in, and then everything goes run amok. But then also small things, like just the, the small moments. Like as he was explaining, uh, Superman's at his doctor's checkup, and he says, yeah, ever since Doomsday punched me in the penis, I just, it hurts when I pee. Yeah, and then the doctor, you know, nods concerned. Yeah, the doctor nods, you know, and says, well, for us regular people, I'll have to use a, uh, you know, x-ray machine, you know, or whatever, the line. I can't think, but you know the line. Yeah. Yeah. 
But like seriously, Doomsday, um we need to have Superman like um, you know Okay, I got it. So like the Flash, he like runs super super fast and then he like creates a trail like he launches a ramp of energy up off of the Earth's trajectory out into the atmosphere that um doomsday um I can't think sorry I'll have to come back to it so they're battling epically in our solar system you know to keep Doomsday away from our planet with his huge moon so Doomsday you know he's got all big rock fists and he's you know punching uh uh, the guy Martian Man, Hunter, and, and Superman, and the Flash, and everyone, and beating the crap out of them, as there's this flashback right after Superman's at the doctor's office, as he remembers, you know, when Doomsday punched him in the penis really hard. Uh, and in that moment, Doomsday was distracted because Superman left himself open for a penis punch. <laughs> but it's because the Flash, he was running around and around the sun, and charging up a giant slingshot like laser beam of electrical energy off the sun that like turns into a giant pool cue as he runs and slams into Venus's moon you know Mercury and then that slams into Doomsday's moon which Doomsday's attached to and has all his energy from and is all macho so then the moon gets hit like a pool cue the evil moon by uh, Mercury back out of our solar system and meow, rocket off into space, you know, as he sucked away. I'll get you next time, you know, as he's yanked, <laughs> tethered to his magnetic moon, you know, out of out of uh, our area of the solar systems, you know, all the way out of our galaxy, right out of the Milky Way, you know. <laughs> Here's my thought: What if, uh, and it's it's probably too stupid. I'm just being juvenile. Yeah. The Flash bounced all that energy off of Wonder Woman's gauntlets. Yeah. And then it, and then it does that. Yeah, you're right. Because we got to use all of their powers together. <laughs> yeah. And then it goes through Martian Man as he goes invisible and he focuses it more through his, yes. through his form. Yes. I don't know why. <laughs> as it can't... changes color, you know, through his green ethereal yes. gas. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, and then it goes into Green Lantern's Lantern, of yeah, course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> then it's a pull cue. Yeah, then he's charged up. <laughs> then he just does it all. <laughs> then it's extra stupid. I forgot to mention the whole time, while they're fighting in Penguin's, you know, fish warehouse area, there's, like, his penguins all over that have orange kryptonite. So they just got a tiny trace amount, so they're just supercharged penguins that are like indestructible sort of because like they're already kind of tough and they smack each other around so then like the whole fight they're like putting out infinite nitrates cold you know as they're like smacked around and like slamming the walls and like exhale cold and everything's freezing all super hard so that then the whole warehouse eventually from all the penguins getting flung around and freezing everything it cracks from the cold you know when uh he punches everything really hard he punches you know one of the pillars and the whole warehouse shatters and falls into the ocean you know the yeah pier area yeah yeah you know penguins got superpower penguins yep well obviously the reason why the cat shows up at the penguins warehouse is because the penguin has you know penguins there that he's feeding orange kryptonite fish you know because like an orange meteor of kryptonite hits somewhere in the ocean by an island then the fish that are hanging out in the reef area you know he's like got a bunch of them there and they're like extra stupid looking like magic carp fish that aren't supposed to be like carp they're just kind of look like that but dumber and like you know longer i guess yeah like rainbow salmon yeah. or trout or something like stupid eyeballs so then um yeah then the cat it's just always trying to upgrade its, you know, power level. It seeks more power for its master behind the scenes. <laughs> yeah, the sinister, the sinister minister, I don't know.
I thought I should mention because uh, I came up with the idea. If they haven't already animated it this way, then this would be a way to get people with their terrible eyeballs and horrible vision to see it still. Um, which they pretty much already have, but they didn't make a video about it. Super Pets 2 and 1 are going to be, because I talked about it without this camera on, using technology where instead of the 3D you know, moving around in an environment that's pre-rendered. The, the entire environment moves around the characters that you're focusing on while they stay still. Everything reacts yeah, to them moving. Yeah, they have animations and interactions supposedly with stuff that's just coming at the camera for a second. Yeah, so that there's no frame rate issues at 24 frames, yeah. which is wearyingly low of frame rate. Because when we were watching the movie, they used the tricks we were suggesting, and it worked, man. You never felt like... Oh, man, the frame tearing's, you know, destroying my skull. Ever. Yeah, exactly, because the buildings yeah. are moving, not the character models around yeah. them. Everything's, yeah. Yeah, it really worked. Totally. So, in Super Pets, like, Lex Luthor, you know, he's got different green kryptonite shards around. So, in the movie, um, Max, for example, he gets exposed to green kryptonite and the other Super Pets... And it makes them be all like, man, we're super hungry. And they, like, can't focus, can't, they just have to keep eating, you know? Until they're all super bloated because, like, they, like, have, like, everybody has cancer. So it's just, like, Superman, why do you think he's all weak around green kryptonite? He's all supercharged, supposedly, but not on all frequencies. He's got cancer like anybody else. That's why he starts getting white temples, you know? Tom Welling has to play him, you know? Now that he's properly fighting Well, cancer. they're the ones who established this in the DC Universe yeah. already with the very most recent movie that he struggled to breathe as yeah. a child showing up to the planet, which sounds like cancer. That sounds like cancer. So, I mean, that's, you know, makes sense. So, animals, they just get infinitely hungry. Yes. So, that's pretty funny, you know. So, then, <laughs> you know, the cat is using green kryptonite to eat more orange fish to upgrade superpowers, you know. Yeah. Also, I forgot to mention the, the full scene of the cat is it slams into the side of the boat like, like you know, I was describing. Yeah. And it makes a dent, but it has to be very particular when it flies across the water. It makes a dent that's like Kong, like more like impacted and not like a stupid cat dent. Yeah. But like within it is a smaller sort of dent like, you know, that, yeah. that's like, you know, makes sense. Where the cat hit harder, of course, because it like it kind of yeah. broke it in, you know, around it. Then it falls down into the water, and That's one of the sliding off a little bit, like yeah, like metal. sort of sliding into into the edge of the den it made, you know, yeah. but like and flopping into the water, yeah. like but like quick, not slow. Yeah, not super slow. Yeah, like kind of like all at once, and at like the you same think time, it's gonna be super slow, but then it just falls. Yeah, and then at the same time. There's a bunch of fish that they just pulled out of the, the you know, the water that they're, you know, yeah, that are, they're all irradiated. Like, yeah, they're just, like, obviously they're dredge them, and they're all, like, laying there piled up on the yeah, tip of the boat. Yeah, they got big, juicy eyeballs. They got big, know? juicy eyeballs, and they got disgusting, you know, veins on, like, the other fish at the warehouse, which are higher quality. Like, they're yeah. actually, like, orange kryptonited to death. Yeah. So then, like, one of the fish falls off the top of the boat and, you know, goes, like, right as the cat, like, goes into the water, it goes, thunk, like, a sec, like, half a millisecond after, whatever, you know, like, yeah, real right quick. After, right next to it, where it went in, yeah. So, like, then the water underneath the surface by the boat starts to boil as, like, you hear the guys be like, yeah, we had to pull all these fish up because they're, you know, they were all, like, dead anyway. And then, like, you know, you see in the water, like, the boiling orange glow yeah. bubbles coming up. Right yeah, exactly. And then you want to cut back to the warehouse. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. All right, to initiate what was happening with Lex, you know, how he's getting chased around by the cat. Um, we, we cut back the, towards the end of the movie to what the happened to the cat when it was beneath the fishing boat and the bubbles turned orange. Um, it's like, it shows the cat underwater... Like, you know, like, yank the um, whole skeleton of the fish out of its mouth. And then it, like, you know, you know, goes all, like, Super Saiyan mode, all stupid. And then, like, it, like, its tail, like, goes straight out and, like, bristles. And then, like, charges with electricity. <laughs> and then starts spinning like a rudder <laughs> propeller. And it takes off like a submarine, you know, through the ocean. <laughs> Like, super fast, you know. Like, over to Lex's, like, super underwater base, you know. <laughs> Where it, you know, starts to, you know, melt through his, you know, 
super titanium shielding with its eyeballs, you know. Yeah, because it's going after the green kryptonite there. Yeah, exactly. Because it needs to be more hungry to eat more, you know. Yeah, exactly. So the whole time Lex thinks that it's after him, but it's just after the kryptonite. Yes. So then finally he blasts it with all the lasers on the moon, you know. Yeah. And, and fulfills its kitty fantasy. <laughs> But he makes a mistake because they're green kryptonite lasers. Yeah, right. <laughs> then it's even hungrier that it just, you know, takes off from the moon. But that's another movie. Yeah, that, that's, we don't even know about that yet. Yeah, so, yeah, he's, the cat's kind of constantly after Lex throughout the movie, right? You, you switch back to it. Um, where, like, for example, after the underwater base, Lex jettisons out of that with, like, a super, like, canister bubble blast you know like all those like super medical canisters that are like silver instead of green with like hyper types of gas for special operations and stuff like he's got like a super like blast rocket so he like boom like shoots up through the water at hyper speed like Mach 10 and he's like in gel like inside of this like you know super rocket as he's like getting warbled all over and his cheeks are you know all distorting and stupid stuff and his skull's all, like, it cracks are, like, shifting, and he's all like, ah, you know, escape from the cat. And then he, like, takes off, you know. He, the rocket, like, gel part of it jettisons out as the rocket flies past a blimp, which then he gets, you know, ejected from it as his big gel ball. And then he gets splatted to the blimp. Which then the platform on the bottom that revolves around, so then he's inside of the blimp, then it's revealed as a jet that takes off out of the blown blimp at super speed. And then he flies all the way over to a secret Tibetan as the and the jet of course is completely invisible, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and then he takes off over to his you know, like it, you like it like shows the you know, Mount Everest, you know. And then, like, you know, the jet coming in, and then it suddenly switches over to the mountain across from it, and then instead he goes over to that one, because it's not Everest, because it's <laughs> stupid. And then he's got, like, a secret base in the side of the mountain, where, like, a green kryptonite, you know, boulder smashed into it, you know, whatever point, you know, from the space. So then, like, the cat, you know, ends up following him, however, enough, much longer, uh, just because it's tracking green kryptonite. Um, uh... My brain hurts. Hey y'all, it's your boy Skinny Penis here. I just like to point out, life of super pets. The way this goes is, so, you know, after we finish up with the cat, you know, and uh, them at the warehouse, it immediately, without hesitation, just like, like away from it over to like, you know, through the city, you know, with that same effect where all the buildings are, you know, the camera's not really moving, everything's just moving around and like kind of unfolding and moving past like it's moving. Over the orphanage placed wherever, like around tall buildings surrounding it, with like a little green lawn around it. And there's a kid on the front of it, and he's like playing with a little kitten, you know? And he's, uh, you know, just playing with the cat and uh, looking kind of disheveled, I don't know, like a little bit scruffy. And then some good, ch uh, like, adult walks up to the, the front steps and goes, Oh, how adorable! And then grabs the cat out of his arms and walks off with it and says, Aren't you the greatest? And then another child walks up to him and says, I can't handle this anymore. The super pets must die. And then, and then that's that's you know that's like it continues from there. You know, back to wherever. I haven't thought of it yet. So then, uh, what he, I came up with here is um, because Grant used like a serious voice, even though that's ridiculous. It just made me think. If you tone that down a little, so it's in between, and then, like, your kid's wearing, like, a hoodie, and, like, in, you know, it doesn't reveal it yet, but inside of the hoodie back, the the evil gopher underminer is, like, who's supposedly one of their pets is, like, grabbed him by the hair and is, like, controlling his thoughts, sort of, you know? He's undermining everything. Maybe the, maybe the super pets do deserve to fall for their hubris. <laughs> So you have a lightning chinchilla. Now, a lightning chinchilla, you might say, is, oh, I don't know, something like something you've heard of before, except it looks nothing like it. Yeah. So uh, little chinchillas have little grabby hands and can grab stuff. 
anything you put in their hands, they'll grab a hold of and stare at you. I saw a video of it. Yeah, you see, uh, what all I gotta say, though, is, um, the gopher undermine is trying to make the moves on, um, the guinea pig, but she's into the, you know, tech enthusiast, um, hamster, and she, she believes in love over, you know, couples of megalomaniacal impact taking over the world in the end, because, you know, love's just too powerful. Yeah, anyways, this lightning chinchilla... It would be, uh, you know, addicted to, like, hmm, what's good? Oh, it's addicted to cranberry hand sanitizer, and it keeps rubbing it on its hands and making little sparks as it explodes yeah. over and over again into, like, like little explosions of, like, red powder. Like, it's not realistic, but, you know, because cranberry doesn't do that visibly, but, you know, like, it, it's cranberry hand sanitizer. Yeah, he's, what, obsessed with being clean? Yeah, when you have an obsessively clean character, then he, like zaps out lightning bolts that like laser blast things clean you know yeah he scours surfaces yeah exactly he goes around like blasting everything clean all over the place and like people are running and screaming and all over the place yeah so <laughs> right from uh where they're dealing with that they have to deal with the lightning chinchilla who's screaming that the dirty part of the city is unclean you know down by the docks yes he will he will purge the slums <laughs> yes, he's he, his, and he's constantly charging back up, and his lightning turns from all like you know, because he like blue to like red as he like you know keeps rubbing hand sanitizer on his hands and saying, "Never be clean, never be clean." Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and then everybody's screaming and running around. Hmm. Yeah. So then, yeah, it's it's perfect. Yeah, they can keep the action up. I like it. It's funnier if instead of. Him, the rocket, you know, from under the ocean with the gas pressure blasting him up. Instead of blasting him right out, calculated up out of the ocean, like, you know, however high quarter of a mile up to where the blimp is, right, like, as it reaches the end of its gas pressure, the rocket, then, like, it's, at a, you know, rocket hatch point opens, and then, like, his blob bubble gets shot out. Yeah. And it splats against the underside of the blimp, and then the rest of it happens. Just, just to clarify. Look, like, Super Pets is a good test because it's just animated, so it's a whole, you know, environment you can animate. So, like, you could have, you know, Screen X where the side walls are also projecting... Because you got Batman beating up all the goons and stuff and using different, you know, batter rings that do different things like shock, you know, and uh, explode and all that stuff. And then you have all the penguins, you know, all jump black, getting blasted around, getting hitting into everyone, shooting ice everywhere, you know, and fish flopping out of crates all over the place. And so there's so many events going on that it would be amazing you could even do what I'm branding 60X, where you have the, the ceiling also projected so that, you know, kids imagine that they're like immersed in the theater room with like every direction, you know, action happening in the cartoon world. I, I think you'd have to come back and watch it over and over again just to fully appreciate it, but that's how good the scene is, you know? I think it's worth it. We need a scene where Martian Manhunter is like complaining to Aquaman because like everybody else got like a super pet and he hasn't gotten anything yet, you know, and he's like talking all soullessly like he does, you know, supposedly. Um, but like, uh,. He keeps going all see-through because, you know, like, he's not connected to anything. He hasn't found anything to live for, you know? So then, like, you know, um, when Aquaman is going to investigate, you know, um, the disturbance of the like venting area where Lex Luthor's you know underground secret facility was where the cat blew it up you know and uh stole the green kryptonite um <laughs> well Martian man goes with him um I'm making this all up in the moment uh I'm trying to torture people okay so 
Like, um, so then, like, you know, he calls on all the sea creatures to, like, prevent, like, you know, like, um, the earthquake. Like, he calls on a bunch of giant crockins to, like, stabilize the, you know, earth's plates in the area, you know? So then, like, a little baby crockin, like, you know, like, you know, is, like, swims up to, uh, you know, um... Uh, Martian Manhunter, and, like, he's all, like, see-through, you know, and, like, not able to help Aquaman, and then it, like, you know, like, suctions onto his, like, you know, area here, like, you know, like, suctions onto his face and, like, migrates around as it, like, can, like, cling onto him because it's been exposed to <laughs> all of the... Cause like one of the bigger crockins, like it's all like straining really hard to like hold two giant ribbon of abyss like things together with some tentacles and like farts out a baby, and then like it's been exposed to all of the kryptonite from Lex's secret lab. So then the baby can interact with Martian man while he's invisible and make him stabilized. You see. <laughs> uh yeah. I don't know what else to add. That about sums it up. I don't know. Alright, so, uh, the same area where Lex Luthor's blown up, you know, underwater facility, all humongously and taken off, um, well, it causes, like, a giant, like, magma spume underwater that's, like, you know, gonna create create a huge boiling area in the ocean near the land where the city is, you know. So then, like, um, the guinea pig, the water guinea pig, that's the, and the, um, you're, you're, sorry. Sorry. My cameraman's making weird expressions I've never seen before. I didn't know. I was just relaxing. <laughs> it was just weird me out. Anyways. Um, so, like, you know, the water guinea pig, you know, sucks up a huge amount of, like, water in the area and, like, becomes a huge area of water under the ocean. And then, um, the fire guinea pig, you know, sucks up the magma and then, like, the two, like, the, the fire one, like, shoots off from the magma into the water one that's all huge with the magma inside. And then, like, you know, creates, like, a superheated, like, effect where, like, it blasts a giant island of, like, the lava upwards. Like, projected through the guinea pig, water guinea pig up into, like, a new island so that, like, it manages all of the lava, you know? upwards instead of towards the city or whatever yeah that's my thought i don't know and then there's tons of little elemental flame guinea pigs that are tiny little infants running around all over the place on it yeah wow <laughs> that's gay <laughs> i like it dc's life of super pets i'm a bit of a furry myself <laughs> but think about it <laughs> what you're saying you got the gist of it is that it's like going through the anus of the big water guinea pig with the lava <laughs> guinea pig and out of his mouth to create the island upwards like yeah so it's all comedically a little stalagmite yeah. that, that's like got a big old huge island you know above it yeah exactly all spread out like cartoonishly you know, it comes up from a magma spout and spreads out on, like, the surface, like, like a big ol' island with, like, a little tiny piece underwater. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there's little flame guinea pigs pouring out on the lava and running around. Yeah. <laughs> so, this, in this description on Amazon, says it's the small, uh... uh bear Otso that the Bane played with as a child. So, I thought... You know, what would be a great idea is if the, the bear was like, you know, uh, like like a bear cub too. And then he's like obviously romantically involved with the bear cub in intimate sexual ways. As they like, you know, make out passionately in some scene because it makes me laugh really hard. 
And it's also it's a sidekick, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's his sidekick in a flashback, and then he, you know, he cries about it because you know he lost the bear somehow, you know, when he had to move or something. Well, yeah. Um... A earthquake happens in Argentina, and him and the bear are separated by the land splitting, you know, inside of some building, and he hasn't seen the bear since. I don't know. Well, like, if you want to go that route, then, um, what, the bear returns, you know, mysteriously <laughs> to, to the city and, um, is like, you know how Mask of the Phantasm is pointlessly <laughs> stupid that way, like, She's, like, going around killing evil people while, like, flaunting her ass at him for no reason mysteriously while, like, like making fun of that, like, this bear, you Yes. Know? It's like reverse pedo bear, you know what I'm saying? It's great. Because, like, South, middle American bears or whatever, uh, they're, like, extra tiny. So, yes. You, know, <laughs> you can have it, you know, look all <laughs> So it looks the same. Yeah. And it looks like a little bigger. Got like orange kryptonite glowing, you know, mask over its eyes like, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Man, that's sensual. Exactly. I guess. <laughs> I yeah, know. look with its with its, its expressions, you see the white part of its mask. It's like those are it's like it moves like the V changes shape and, and, and size in different ways. To like be expressions, you know, like the whole face mask is moving. Yeah. With expressions, you know, awesomely. Yeah, this baby bear, you know, that's not a baby anymore. It just, you know, it was all silly midget bear. Uh, it's probably going to be competing with Kitty Meow Meow for fish, you know. So that creates, you know, domestic disturbances, you know. That's, uh, you know, like all the buildings being shattered. Yeah, the bear. <laughs> the bear meets uh, the cat in uh, Tibet, you know, and they have a battle as Lex Luthor escapes again. Yeah, right. That just to mix it up. You're right. Yeah. We need more action to it. The yeah. you know the Bane bear because it gets serum from Bane. Yeah. And, you know, it sneaks into his lab, and that's how it's like mysterious because it's like you know Bane wants to know who's the person who stole his serum and is rampaging. You know. Yeah. And <laughs> it's, it's the South American bear. You know. Yeah. Wow. That makes sense, I guess. You have, like, a shadow come from, like, the basement level, like, of, like, the bear's little ears, you know, and, like, round head. And, <laughs> you know, you have the, the, the low level, because it's, like, nobody can sneak in through it, like, little glass thing open, because the bear's still small, and then, like, it pomp into the room. Well, you gotta have the fight on all of the, you know how... In ancient samurai movies, they always are on silly wires connected to boats with like jib cranes. They this is how they used to do it, and then they'd you know you know jump from between different small fishing vessel long boats you know at each other in midair and clang swords and stuff, and then land on different boats you know with legs spread you know ninja like and stupid stuff. So we need to have that action all cliche between the bear and the cat as they're trying not to knock the boats over with the fish in them, you know, as they want to eat the fish. And so, yeah, you can um, have them floating around, you know, limiting their power usage because they don't want to disturb the boats. But, like, their, I guess, real quest is the green kryptonite so that they can get hungry enough to eat the fish. So that's what they're really fighting over. So as Lex Luthor, um, he takes off in like one of those um, junks, but like it turns into like a speedboat, you know, that goes up on like, you know, those metal skiff things. Yeah. And then it's got like, you know, rockets on it and it's like takes off, you know, at super speed. So then like, um,. The green kryptonite is all like I don't know, I have to think about this. 
I don't. I wasn't even listening to what you were saying at this yeah. point. Yeah, I know. So the cat, when it meets Bane, it, it always mentions its master at least once in each scene. You know, telling them that, you know, it really doesn't care one way or another about them, but its master needs something, and it needs the power that its master can provide by providing it more power. So, <laughs> uh, to the bear, it says, you know, you are obsessed with the energy of children, but my master is not a child. My master has the energy of all ages. My master is infinite. And then they start fighting each other, you know? Yeah, definitely. And they need to be all flowy fighting, you know, up, like, on the tops of the boats, you know, all kicking each other's asses, you know, with karate moves because they're trying to, and they're all floaty supposedly and spinning and hitting into each other. Because, so each like, the fishermen are, like, moving fish around below and they don't want to disturb the fish and have them all fall back into the ocean, like I was saying. And they don't want to, like, shoot energy blasts that deflect off each other. Because, again, that'll disturb the water too much. So, when they shoot energy, it, like, reflects up into the night sky, you know, epically, I guess. Yeah, exactly. It makes lightning of their, their, their different colors crackle through the sky, you know. The teddy bear's energy is purple and it's, uh, you know, orange. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, like I was saying, um, what I was thinking is, you know, initially they, you know, jump at each other. And the cat, you know, spins up its tail like it already has in the previous scene. And, like, you know, like, sort of, like, whips itself into the air with a cloud of electricity. But then it stops spinning, like, as if it's, like, it's charged, you know. And, like, flying through the air with, a, like, a, like electricity pulling up from itself into the clouds. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's, like, held aloft by the clouds that start forming dramatically from its electricity. As it's, like, you know, starts pouring rain and they're, like, punching each other through yeah. raindrops and stuff. And, exactly. like, kicking at each other in midair. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. <clears throat> oh, and the rain turns purple because the teddy bear keeps exploding with purple mist. Yeah, yeah. And then you have purple rain play, you know? Yeah, exactly. Uh, hey, that's amazing. Yeah, I like that. There's a slow motion punching at each other while all the, the fishermen below them stare in horror upward at them, you know, with the light of the lightning glowing in their eyes as they As you like know, the buildings, the, you know, the towers of uh, whatever stupid Asian city right along the bay are all getting hit by their lightning, you know, all shocking along the towers as... Uh, Oh, and porpoises come, you know, like dolphins come up from the, you know, the ocean and uh, stare at them and uh, cackle and uh, clap their hands together. Yeah, exactly. Uh, while seals climb on rocks and like eat popcorn. I don't know why they get, how they got that popcorn. They like pull it out, you know, it's like dry. Some of the water pours off of it and they're eating like dried popcorn. No, there's like a popcorn vendor, you know, right there. You know, going the promenade by the water, you know. Oh, okay, yeah. They're hanging out on the beach then, not the yeah. rocks. I don't know. Staring at the lightning arc overhead into the buildings. Yeah. So then, like, all of the glass can shatter epically along the buildings as, like, the teddy bear punches the cat, you know, in the uh, chest or whatever. But then it, like, uses all the buildings to, like, push, you know, and, like, not be affected by the blow as it, like, rebuffs the teddy bear and, like, injures its, you know, paw, uh, paw arm, you know. Because the cat's going too super sane, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <clears throat> but then, you know, the damage makes, you know, the Bane Serum teddy bear activates. And then it goes all swole mode, you know. And then it's, like, blasting purple energy, like, out of its eyeballs, you know. Like, coming out of its ears, you know. Like, as smoke, you know. <laughs> then they're, you know, <laughs> Dragon Ball Z speed fighting each other, you know. As blasts of concussive waves go up and shatter into the clouds at different angles. Yeah, you know, you know and wave out, pushing the raindrops away from them in spears. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't know why. Yes. So the transition between scenes from whichever one it is to um, whatever it's called, uh, the, you know, Shangri-La-La place, whatever, um, Bhutan, is... The turtle rushes in and winds up in between both of them as they're, you know, about to fight each other. And then says, you know, because it, it always forgets where it's going and leaves a fight because it's going so fast. And then it says, 
whoa, who the fuck are you guys? And then, and then both stare at it awkwardly as like a cricket, you know, actually like hops on and like crickets and it stares at it and then goes and then eats the cricket yeah. and then takes off again back, you know, to the, you know, where it came from. Yeah. I don't know. What, you mean she's like reporting to the super pets what's happening? No, she she unintentionally shows up there from a fight because her electricity oh, is attracted yeah. to theirs, like, magnetically, because they're generating so much. Yeah, yeah. Then she just says, holy fuck, what the fuck is going on? And then takes off back to where they are. So it's like a transition to yeah. their fight in oh, Bhutan. Oh, yeah, see? like across the whole planet. <laughs> yeah, like, she just ran, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, across the water or whatever. Yeah, yeah, like skipping, like, you know, pulls her legs in and skips across the water, you know, all the way across the world. With, like, the curvature, you know, you see, like, the streak of light going as, like, the sun starts to come up, you know. Because they got to meet in Bhutan when the sun's coming up and then the clouds cover it, you know. So it's, like, almost night again with the lightning and shit. Like, it starts raining. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, sunrise, not sunset. So it's all sexy and orange, you know. Like, you know, the, the teddy bear's in the blue with his purple energy in the shade of the building. And the cat's out in the, the orange sunlight rising in Bhutan with the giant sun, you know, all glowing orange on top of orange. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> but we need, like, you know, the final finale to be, like, the uh, cat, like, you know, breaks off the top of a falling, you know, building skyscraper, you know, extra tall one there and whatever, Taiwan or wherever it is. Not Taiwan, we're doing... Uh, Bhutan? We're, we're not in Bhutan, no. We're oh. over in uh, Hong Kong, let's oh. say. So then whatever that stupid tall crystal tower is, you know, then, it, you know, it's, it's all smashed by supercharged Bane Punch into the tower, and then all of its orange electricity, like, shatters the whole building. So then it, like, throws the top of the building with a bunch of orange electricity at the bear who's like crushed back out into the bay underwater by the building you know and then there's a bunch of like you know green crackles of electricity like shocking across the water of the bay as like the bear um gets to where the Lexus secret base was underwater there and um where his uh, green crystals of kryptonite are. So then, like, the bear gets all, like, super, like, huge-sized, you know? As it, like, you know, is all huge, and it's, like, eating the, the fish off of the boat. You oh, know, like, picking yeah. up the boats and, like, eating all the fish, and the cat gets, like, super angry, you know? And it's, like, just meowing and, like, shooting around and, like, beating the shit out of, you know, the giant Bane Bear at all angles is, like, it's yeah, ignoring it. Yeah, the bay, like, rocketing around, yeah. going... Meow, 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 yeah. meow, meow, around every direction, you know, creating, like, little ringlets of uh, orange around it. Yeah, so finally... Firing missiles at it from its tail, So finally, know, it does quad its... missiles. It does its super charge-up move where it flies around the entire world and reverses time and picks up so much speed against the planet's uh, rotational spin that then it punches you know the bear so hard you know as a streaking comet around the whole planet and the, the sound when it hits the bear is this <laughs> and yeah. then the bear and then the bear shrinks in size yeah. and it parts a giant yeah. amount of purple gas exactly exactly is the as all of the uh energy is driven out of the bear you know and a giant fart explosion yeah i don't know I, this is getting real stupid yeah and that's, you know, we always end each battle with just the explosion, and then it switches the back to the super pets. Yep. That's how we do it, I guess. Oh, I forgot to mention. Yeah, because it's, transi <laughs> it's the transition from a Bane to, you know, the bear and its story. Um, the... <laughs> okay, so... When the building's splitting apart, and he says, uh, he, he says, uh, <laughs> That day, I learned that I must become stronger. Stronger than I had ever been before. Because if I had been, I could have jumped that gap. I could have reached him. <laughs> but then... <laughs> 
when it fades back, it's it's like the other side of the memory. And it's like it's from the perspective of the bear, you know, instead of Bane. Because that's another transition. Like, that's how we transition to the bear. Like, it transitions from Bane's story, and then you think it's still Bane talking. But then it's the bear instead. Because they sound way too similar, you know, like, when they're all r- r- morose. Well, no, but I thought the whole time that the whole cutscene flash away of the backstory, you just hear it, and then you think it's Bane because it shows Bane and the bear, but then it's the bear talking about how he yeah, was the, with Bane and couldn't get to him the whole point, time, yeah. and it's never Bane that's talking. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah. Yeah. Right, because it's all. About but it's like it go. It still goes into Bane thinking about the memories. The bear's thinking about it at the same time, so that you don't realize that it's like yeah. a. So yeah. then it's like a weird transition where it's yeah. like shared memory, and, and and then the camera follows. Like you see them split yeah. in midair, all in black and white, like him falling away into rubble, and the other way into dust rubble as well. You know, as the building splits in half. With like the chasm mountain yeah. separation. Yeah, yeah. and. <laughs> As it's like all spheroided as they both fall away to either sides, you know, like it's an infinite stretching on like, you know, orange cam distance, you know. Yeah. So then, uh, like, it, it, the camera then, like, you think it's going to follow Bane and then it turns past his head, you know, like it goes yeah. towards his face and around his head and then back, <laughs> back towards the bear. Yeah. And then it like, you know, closes in on the bear falling into darkness, you know, with its facial expression changing to pain yeah. and fear, you know, as it cries out. Yeah. And then it, it fades away to his expression, you know, as it gets up close to his face, you know, then, and it's the bear talking, you know, yeah, to itself. Of course, yeah. Yeah, definitely. So just to make it clear what I was saying, the, um, cat going around the planet it what you do is you have a perspective from a satellite camera as the cat goes around the planet past it faster and faster until there's that effect where it's like striping through so quick that you see the cat you know going quicker and quicker like one of those horse track things you spin as it goes meow wow wow and then the silly sound going past faster and faster as it picks up more energy as you know it also shows you know a cutaway of um like the giant tiny bear you know eating more fish off of boats but and like as though its energy keeps carrying forward it's eating so fast when the cat keeps picking up more speed until there's that effect where the cat looks like it's going backwards in time as it really is and then time starts to reverse as it starts to uneat all the food you know and then when the cat shows up, it punches it super hard, and then it, the rest of the gas rockets out of it as a giant purple cloud that covers the city. And you end the scene. Anyways, I forgot to mention, when the bear shrinks down in size, somebody, you know, smacks their lips at the air. And I haven't decided, is it better if it's monk fruit that they say, or grapey? Well, grapey because he's a bear in the middle America region, so like extra small... And they go around eating things like, you know, those banana plants the, and grapes and cactuses and other stuff that grows in the environment. So, yeah, it's, it's be grapey, I guess. Yeah, so then some, you know, some stupid monk who goes at the air and goes, grapey. Yeah. <laughs> After the enormous explosion. Oh, is it one of the Swastika Zen temples? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, one of the Amun Ra worship centers. Yeah, versus yeah. SmackDown. <laughs> <laughs> so the reason the turtle shows up there, of course, is because when the cat's reversing time on the bear eating the fish, then it makes the turtle, when it's running at the same point on the same planet, you know, suddenly, like, you're all confused because it's, like, running, but it's not running that fast. Suddenly, it's ran extra fast over to where they're battling, you know, yeah. immediately. And, and then, it, like, reacts like, who cares? There's another huge battle going on because it yeah. doesn't give a crap. And then it just looks around and just says, so where the fuck am I? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Okay, so Keanu Reeves, um, his character of Batman, 
because I, I know he's like Batman and he has a small closet full of black clothes of uh, different types and black shoes. Because he's always wearing fucking black at every event and everywhere. So, uh, you just, that's Batman's closet, you know? Yeah, uh, you know, his dog goes in there and chews on his black clothing, you know? I mean, on his black clothing, his black, like, shoes, you know? He's got, like, his black bat boots in there. Because he's a bat bitch. Yeah, so he's got indestructo teeth, and then, uh, it's kind of an issue, you know? I mean, we gotta have the dealings of the owners with their pets, you know, actually in the movie, because it's the, uh, lives of the super pets. But I guess if we have non-stop action, and they're always being called away to the action, then we can, you know... That is their lives. So yeah. that works out pretty nicely, I think. Yeah, that's the ironic part. Yeah.